So, hello there, welcome. My name's Dill. This is a presentation take two on how does 2021 feel? Um, let's get going. Bit, bit weird, but anyway. Right. So, look, the question I'm going to ask you is do you feel as if 2020 and 21 were a snap? Or are they the option of a restart? I'm going to share my journey share some ideas, and hopefully at the end of this session, you will begin to think of it as a restart rather than a snap. So during the, I guess it's three or four, I can't, I've, I've actually lost count how many ever lockdowns we've had. We've all had time to think and uh, space and so forth. And so these are the ideas I've come up with or heard and retuned and I'd like to share them with you. So. Three currencies of the digital age. The first one is money now. In money, everybody knows about currencies. So there's pound, yen, dollar. You've got the cryptocurrencies, all, all of that good stuff going on. So there's, 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 uh, there's the three currencies of the digital age. Everybody focuses on money. But my question to you is, you should think about treating time as a currency. Now, recently, a couple of weeks ago, there was a little news item about someone on, on a certain uh, reality show said, certain girl said, uh, everyone has 24 hours. And that's the idea I want you to think about. I don't, I, I don't want to be on the news, I don't want, you know, but look, we all have 24 hours. You think of time as a currency and what you're exchanging it for, and usually we end up exchanging time for money. Your, your ideas begin to change. it, And then at the top of this pyramid is attention. Okay. So the way, way to think about attention is at the start of each day, we have a certain amount of attention and it depletes through the day. This is one of the reasons a lot of the tech people wear the same clothes every day. They're not actually the same clothes. They're, the, they're another set that look exactly the same. So they don't have to choose clothing in a sense. Why? Because they're saving their attention for the important decisions. That's the idea behind it. So if you think of, if you start thinking of these three things as a currency, see, we'll see where that takes you. Now, I, I heard this idea where someone, a famous YouTuber said, attention is more important than money and then, as through the lockdown progressed, and, and I've slotted that time idea in between. So that's the idea where I'm coming from. Look, is it okay if I'm a little bit harsh but fair with you? So if you're okay with that, put it on the chat. And I'm going to share my journey. Now, this is what we're, what we're fighting. Okay, and you're sitting there thinking, Dill, you're, you're nuts. We're not fighting the goldfish. We're, no, it's not the goldfish. So when I first heard this stat, it went something like goldfish have an, have an attention span of eight seconds. Human beings are much more important, higher up on the evolutionary scale. They've got an attention span of 15 seconds. And I think this was before Facebook became really popular. And thanks to Facebook, goldfish have still stayed at eight seconds. And we've come down to seven seconds. So thank you very much, Facebook. But the idea is we're fighting a lack of attention from everybody we interact with. So that's a really important idea. Okay. So any business, any organization will face these three challenges. And if you put it in the chat, see which one's yours, it'd be interesting to know. And then we can perhaps think about how we deal with it. Number one is time. Nobody has enough time. Money or financial resources, every, most people have a limit on financial resources, so they have to think about where they're going to devote those and what they're going to do with them. And the third idea is an unusual one, but it's not really. It's always been with us, except we have focused more on it. It's the idea of overwhelm. When things get beyond our capacity, we get overwhelmed. And to throw it into the mix of the last two years, we've had the Donald Rumsfeld saying the unknown unknowns, and we've We've gone through unknown unknowns. We're still in it at the moment. So 
those are the three challenges everybody's likely to face within their organizations and businesses. Look, look let me share my journey, and I, I'm sure you'll you'll see some of the points that come across and you'll sympathize and 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 find uh, points that you you'll agree with. So my, my 2020 started great. I, I got to tick something off my bucket list. I flew out, ended up in Phuket, and the beach actually looks like that. The water is crystal clear, unbelievable. The sand is pure white and the temperature is fantastic, even when it's a gloomy winter's day in, in, in sunny Blighty. So that was my start. Now, little did anybody realize the snapping that was about to come in 2020. And I think we have no arguments on that. So every great story needs a great villain. And here's ours, the COVID virus. And it will probably go down as history as one of the greatest villains we've all come across, as, as anybody on the, everybody on the planet has been affected. And at that point, guess what happened? We all know what happened. The lockdown started. And it's, um, it came so out of the blue, so unexpected, so fast and frequent that nobody could get their hands around it. And this is, it's not funny actually, but this is what it felt like. It, it almost felt as if there was an hourly broadcast on something new every, every hour. And at that point we had no, all our work had stopped. Everybody phoned us up and said, yo, we're gonna suspend our project. We don't know what's going on, uncertainty. Uh, the one project we could do and the people who wanted us to execute, we couldn't because of the lockdown. So in a sense, no work. And, you know, boredom started setting. But more importantly, along with everybody else, we, had, we were worrying about the financial issues. How were these going to play out? What were we going to do? You know, it, it was a smaller niggle, and, but there were a lot of people that were really stressed about it. So, you know, um, I think I coped quite well, but there were, there were stresses there. So then I got a call from the Maharaja, yeah, a great friend of mine. I, I met him over a number of networking meetings. Um, number of networking meetings and... Um, you know, when, when, when you interact with business colleagues or customers or so on, you always try and put a brave face on it. However, when you, when you become friends with people and close and real friends, sometimes you share truths with them, depending on your relationship with them. So, Maya just says to me, Dil, what are you doing? I said to him, I was basically, it was a lovely sunny day just gone down but it was even sunnier than now really warm I was in the garden with my shorts and t-shirt just doing my daily exercise doing absolutely nothing because there was nothing I could do I had enough of watching the news at that point and I said I'm topping up my vitamin d and he said listen all the folks that were running in live network meetings have all switched onto zoom why don't you come on and I'll I'll send you the links so that really is where my Zoom journey started. And, you know, like a kid in a sweet shop, you get a new toy, you sometimes overdo it. And that's what I did. So I, I was able to attend meetings that I couldn't go to before. I was able to, you know, because of the distance, meet other people and it, and it was fun for a while. And then suddenly this, I heard this figure on one of these Zooms or news broadcasts, I can't remember where. Um, this actually gave me nightmares. And it, it, was, it was an interesting idea. It said, for every 1% GDP drop, there's projected to be 37,000 suicides. And I remember I couldn't sleep for, for quite a while when hearing that idea. Mainly because even now I can think of at least three people who have committed suicide over the night and a large amount of the reasons are financial. So 
it was a horrible idea. It actually gave me sleepless nights. Um, however, on one of these Zoom meetings, I saw something really great. I saw these property investors, there were ladies and they were sitting there sewing. They were actually sewing face masks for NHS people because you couldn't get those at that time. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. We're all, look, it was amazing the way everybody pulled together in 2020, the whole country. Um, and, and these ladies were on a Zoom meeting listening to the stuff and they were sewing face masks. I thought, wow, that's awesome. And so I wanted to help, but I didn't want to, I couldn't sew, didn't want, want to go into hospital to help, I put myself at risk and cause them a bigger problem. So the organization I'd done training for previously, I offered to help them. Now that they were using Zoom and I picked up this new toy, but <clears throat> they said, they didn't come back, but it, the answer wasn't so great. So they didn't accept it really. Um, awful. And then I got in touch with one of my contacts on LinkedIn. They said, yeah, right, do a training for us. So I, I practiced this and I ended up doing a training for 287 surveyors. Biggest training I'd ever done. I thought, wow, that's magic. And I remember a question uh, Paul on the other side said, how many can you accommodate? And I thought, Zoom, you can have as many as you want. Yeah, I can get up. Yeah, and you could do it on a monthly basis. So I raised it to a thousand. We had 287 people on. And it's really funny because even now I, I I end up getting invited to webinars where they say there's only a thousand, uh, sorry, a hundred seats available. I say, look, it's Zoom. You can upgrade it. It doesn't cost a fortune. You could do it for the month, you know. So you have to understand that idea, you know. And the number one question on that online trading wasn't anything to do with my training they said do you have a cpd training so i thought, I thought about cpd trainings before before the lockdown in, in the past and it's, it's a really great way of creating trainings that feed your business so i thought maybe you should look into it and that that's where my cpd journey started but i wanted to do it differently you know i, I wanted to think about the time and I, and I remember I, I I didn't want to do lunch and learn or sort of turn up and do trainings, which which was the the way it was done before. I didn't actually even want to do the Zoom continuing round of Zooms because, quite frankly, if you drill it, if you're delivering the same content same time, you're you're all going to get bored. So didn't want to do that. I thought let me let me come up with a new concept that was new to me everything online can i get it delivered around the clock and that's where i got in touch with the cb systems guys and i said we want you to create and we we work together in terms of creating that system so piece of magic i've got an online training now that works around the clock whether i'm here or whether i'm able to sit jet off on a beach when eventually they do open up again so What's not to like? And that got me thinking, look, this journey is a little bit strange, amazing, however you want to call it. Let me share it with people and see if, if I can help them benefit. That, that's the whole driver behind it. Let me ask you a quick question. No. Mindset, right? Now, now I'm walking into the lion's den with this community because there's a lot of people that know a lot more about mindset than I do. But what percentage do you believe due to mindset so put your answers in the chat there's no right or wrong answer it's just what you believe there isn't and there's no prize for this question i'm sorry okay okay so here's my three ideas on mindset i'm going to share them with you and this idea developed as part of a conversation but i'm, I'm just going to share the idea with you right in the background one of my friends phoned me up and said you did the marathon you developed the mindset then you did the marathon i thought no, actually, you're wrong. I had a mindset, which was, I'd like to have a go, I'm not sure if I can do it. And this happens with any training, any, any course, any, any program we go into. 
where we have an existing mindset, an existing idea, existing set of ideas. We then you use that training as the tools. And then we take action. We go through that training. We do the exercises. We listen to the start, lectures, the videos, and so on. And then we have a learning which gives us a new mindset. So basically existing, action, and new mindset. And here's, if you write this idea down, this is an interesting idea I came across in my first CPD that I developed. When you're asking the questions, make because watching the video training is a passive activity, they may not even be taking no notes now because they have the slides. You want to make at least one of the questions so hard that they actually get it wrong. You don't want them to succeed in it. And the reason being that mistake or the question that they get wrong, the learning from them, from that question, will like actually embed the idea that you've taught them. So just write that down. Make it so hard that all the students who do that question actually fail. I know it's a horrible idea, but it's for their good. So second mindset idea I'm going to talk about is think about your thinking. Really be careful about what you're thinking. This, this idea started from when I heard a quote from William Shakespeare, the bard. There's nothing either good or bad, but making things but thinking makes it so. So William Shakespeare, Hamlet, Act Two, Prince of Denmark. So think about that. Think about the idea. Think about what you're thinking. And also be careful what you feed into your mind in terms of negative thoughts. So one of the things I do is I watch a lot. I, I try not to watch the news. Watch it very infrequently. I'm very careful what, what I'm allow and what I talk what I discuss in terms of the input into your mind so that's that's an idea I think you'll find useful number three idea on mindset be the beacon now remember when I talked about that one to 37,000 ratio that really scared me and at that time they were talking about five to ten percent GDP drop so time that 37,000 by five to ten Look, when I was a child in India, I, I was a, ch a child, I spent one of my Diwali's in India. We had what called a diva. It's basically a little clay pot with a cotton wick, bit of oil or, or ghee in it. You light the cotton wick and it gives you a little flame, a bit like a candle, right? This is where the word Diwali actually comes from, diva. So you, you have this little flame very much like a candle. And if you've ever seen a candle in a total darkness, in a place of total darkness, the light it emits out is amazing for the size of the flame. And in a sense, that's what you need to think about being for your clients, the people you serve, the people you want to serve. You want to be their beacon so you can help them light that spark and they'll go on to have an impact on other people. So take the focus off your problems and think about helping them. And, it, and, it, and it's a great way, way to be. So those are the three mindset ideas. I hope you find them useful and write them down. So put your questions in the chat. Now, I'm gonna talk about the strategies that I'm gonna be executing during for the next year. And I'd, I'd love to come back and see, tell you which ones worked, which didn't. But, Here's number one strategy, less is more, right? So as part of the CPD package, you get five CPDs. Make your first CPD between 30 to 57 minutes. Make it like a mini course. No more, no more than 57 minutes. In, when they used to have lunch breaks and they used to do it, you used to call it lunch and learn. Just think of that concept. You're not trying to give them massive amounts you're better off giving them less that they then translate and they get value from and your audience then say okay i'm getting an eye value from this idea it's great i and then work on developing a coaching program now the coaching programs 
four hours upwards. And I've even heard of a coaching program that the guy says it takes a year to do. So that's how you split it. I, I, I made this error. My first training was three hours and I, I'm sitting there thinking, that's probably why nobody wants to complete it. They can't see the three hours. They can't see themselves spending three hours. Whereas 30 minutes, 57, you can almost sit there and do it on one hit. So bear that idea in mind. And I've also been on, I've delivered in life training where it's a one day training. Effectively, you're only delivering four hours of actual training after you finish all the fire drills and that and so forth. And then after lunch, everybody fades out. And then three o'clock, they, they wanted to catch their trains home because some of them come from distance. So in effect, a one day course is only four hours of training. And when you could deliver it using a variation of videos, worksheets and so forth, turn that into a coaching program, much more effective for the audience. Much better for you in terms of time and focus. Okay, second strategy I'm going to talk about is Web 2.0. You're going to say, what's Web 2.0? Basically, websites, emails, and so forth were Web 1.0. Social media is Web 2.0. And then now they're moving on to this new crypto and, and blockchain stuff, Web 3.0. And people aren't started, but they can't get their heads around. So basically, Web 2.0 is social media. Now, not all social media is equal. There's what I call tier one social media. And basically, that's YouTube. Medium, Medium is a blogging platform, but it's slightly different in that Google gives it very, very high authority. So YouTube is the second biggest search engine that's owned by Google, which is the biggest search engine. And Medium has a very high priority on Google. So whether you like doing presentations or you like doing um, written work, you're covered. And then the third one is a bit of an oddity, but it is, it's super good. It's, it's podcast and you can turn your blogs or your video presentations into podcasts. The reason those three platforms are tier one is because as you put more and more content, your content builds and the old content becomes more valuable. So if you do Facebook, you're not going to like this idea, but it is the truth. And I did say I'd be harsh, but fair. So there you go. Sorry, Mark. Um, strategy number three. Now, everyone keeps talking about the lockdowns are coming, they're relaxing, they're on and off and on and off, and everyone's worried. So look, think about this. You, within your business or your organization, you want to create an everything online division or subsection, yeah? And make it time and attention focused. So... That's the third strategy. Make it all about your and your participants' time and attention. And think of it as a, almost a business unit within your own business. And if you, if you give that more priority while the lockdowns are on, it'll carry on running when, the lo when we eventually end up going back to a new normal, whatever it, it is, whenever it is. But take the opportunity now to develop that uh, business unit, if you like. Um, so my, my version of this would be, you know, when they say life gives you lemons, bake lemonade. Perhaps you want to think about life gives you lockdown, turn it into a business retreat and create a online division. Have a think about that. So look, now I'm going to go through the first one again and I'm going to try and get you to realize the importance of this one. You have five CPDs, make one as your lead magnet. Perhaps two, one could be a video one. Video ones are probably more popular, but if you really wanna cover all your bases, there's a significant amount of audience that's getting, uh, not getting um, catered to, and that's the people who love written stuff because people can do written stuff without watching videos. There's a weird split on, on preferences. Um, once you've got one or two of those lead magnet CPDs, then create a coaching program. That's the most effective strategy I can think of at the moment. The idea too is Web 2.0, tier one social media, and create everything online, attention and time focused. So send in your questions when we meet up or when I can, I'll love to answer your questions. Okay, now third set of ideas. 
the tactics. What tactics am I going to employ? You're going to hate this one. Use slides effectively. And you're sitting there thinking, Dill, your slides look like if they've been done by a five-year-old. The colours they're using are, are, are primary school colours. Yes, they are, because they're supposed to be. Why? Here's a little secret I'm going to let you into. That colour palette you see when you click down PowerPoint or anything you do with colouring your, your letters or your text, those companies have spent a fortune on The reason the standard colours are at the bottom is they attract more attention. Everyone, all the designers get hold of your slides and turn it into pastel colour PowerPoint. Yeah, it looks nice for corporate stuff, but it's horrible. It's rubbish for get, getting attention. If you can't get your audience attention and keep it, they're not paying attention to your message. The third thing, the other thing I, I would say with effective slides is I learned to use the animation aspect of PowerPoint. And it's the same on Macs, right? With Mac or Windows. So what, what do I mean by that? The, the 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 slide animations. Okay, so if you look at this slide itself, the title came up, then picture one came up and picture two. Let me apply this to text. So for example, if you look at this slide, I have seen so many presenters just throw this slide up and read through it and go through the points. What's happening in the background is, once you put it up, the audience read through it and then are switching off. What you need to learn to do is to put, so even in the title, I've said there's three strategies coming up. You've read this and said, all right, that's one. Where are the other two? I'm, I'm waiting for the other two. It's opened up what they call an open loop. And as you throw each one up, you're keeping the movement going. So the, your audience's brain is still engaged. And the third thing is, um, talking heads don't work anymore. They're rubbish. They might be time efficient. Oh, you don't have to create slides, but they're not effective. So make sure you do slides with your presentation. You're better off doing less with slides than more with talking heads. So don't fall into that trap. And when you've got slides, you're feeding your audience the same message visually as well as audibly. Yeah, so that's the idea behind effective slides. Now, you, you really don't understand the full power of Zoom. It's, it's a piece of kit that's amazing. And please don't tell the guys at Zoom because they'll put their prices up. All right, I'm going to share three ideas that Zoom, three aspects of Zoom you may not have been come across and not understand how to use them. So behind me is a green screen. I use a green screen because anybody looking looks at the logos. And behind the green screen is my beach. No, not really. Uh, but it might be one day. You never know. Yeah. So green screen. Number two magic in Zoom is I use Zoom directly to cast straight onto YouTube. I don't actually know how to do it from YouTube. I know how to do it from Zoom. So use that to go straight onto YouTube. And there's there's a whole bunch of good stuff that happens when you do it live. You don't worry about your makeup, your hair, your lighting. You just go bang, done. Yeah. And it's too late. <laughs> okay. And the third and third and the most powerful point is use Zoom to create two to eight minute videos. That timing is important because don't do massive long videos. Do short, sharp videos that you then use for your training programs. Okay. Because people can watch it one bit at a time and watch the next one and the next one rather than get lost in the long video that they're not going to bother watching. So how did I just, so by the way, this is a tribute to Keith Prowse, Green Cross Code Man, who played, Darth, who was in the suit and Darth Vader. The voice was done by Earl Jones. Um, Keith passed away in one of the, one of the Zoom, uh, one of the lockdowns. So that's my tribute to him, hero. Now, this is my training background. There's only three points. I want you to focus on three points. 2018, I did a Zoom training. Sorry, you to me training, beg your pardon. In that training, I created online videos, and it's an online platform. I only started to use Zoom in 2020, 
during lockdown. And my first CPD was last year that uh, it was a certified last year or 2020. It's a very recent activity for me. One of the things I discovered, if I contrast my experience with Udemy, the online training, and the way I use Zoom now, Zoom is 12 to 20 times faster for the output than Udemy, than, than the process I have to use Udemy. It's faster, it's cheaper, it's more efficient. And the thing I discovered is, rather than editing videos, it's quicker and easier just to re-record and away you go. So that's the most powerful idea here. Now, third tactic I come to, and I've mentioned that CPD gives you five trainings. Use one of them as a lead magnet that you can either sell for very cheap, pure online, or give it away free as a lead magnet. And that's lead magnets depend on their value. And a lead magnet with CPD is the most valuable lead magnet people can get. They will share it and boost your business. Now, the trick to beware at, at this point is you need to use that lead magnet to build your email list. If you, the only thing your business owns are not your subscribers, not the people who join your Facebook and YouTube and all of these channels, it's your email list. At any time, any of those platforms can kick you off, terminate your account, do whatever. The only thing you'll be left with is an email list that you can build a new business. So that's why email list is the most valuable resource in your business, your organization, and so forth. Pay it a massive amounts of focus. It's almost like your customer database. And in before the web, people used to pay enormous amounts of money for businesses with huge customer bases. So focus on that. It doesn't matter what your organization is, profit, non-profit, email list is the most important aspect of your business. There's my three tactics, yeah? Um, and look, it's not the end. Uh, I'd love to come back next year and share with you whether what some of my tactics or strategies work. The answer is that I don't know, but this is what I'm going to be focusing on this year. Um, this is not the end, it's just the start because and, and, until we go to the until we go to the massive beach in the sky, we're here to do what we need to do. Yeah. Um, so let me thank you for your sharing your most valuable resource, your time, and most most importantly, your attention. I'm going to leave you with one last idea. Look, there is you have an existing mindset. Whatever is going on around us, use it as a training ground. Take consistent, persistent daily action and develop a new mindset. And I hope this snap turns into a great restart for you. Once again, thank you for sharing your time, your most valuable resource in the universe.